how great thou art, then saves my soul. Yes. My Savior God, to thee, praise the Lord. Oh Lord my God, when I'm yes. in awesome wonder, yes. consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder. Yes. Thy power yes. throughout this universe is played. Yes. And then of course, and then sing my soul. Yes. Mm. Savior God to me. Yes. How great thou art. Because our God is a great God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise yes. shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. My soul will make yes. a boast in the Lord. The other yes. shall hear and be glad. Yes. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. <laughs> and then the song says, and let, let us exalt his name together. Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. If I have not told you yet, happy new year. Praise the Lord. Glory to God and to all of our Facebook family, those who are told with us this morning, we'll say good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to House of Faith Christian Center, located in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. And I'm glad that you've taken out of your busy schedule to be a part of this worship service today. Praise the Lord. And uh, won't you just go ahead and hit like it and share it, like it, hit share and let all your family members and friends know that House of Faith Christian Center, that we are live and on the air. House of Faith Christian Center, praise the Lord. We have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. Yes. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Yes. House of Faith Christian Center, here we are ministry of excellence, yes. effectiveness, and encouragement. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this worship experience today. And that we praise God that you would truly receive a word, not only a word of God, but a word from God. Because we yes. believe one word from God will change your life forever. Yes. Praise the Lord. So again, go ahead and hit like and share his like and hit share it all of that those family members know that uh, we're live and on the air. Praise the Lord and that you can that is truly be blessed with the Lord in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lord. So listen, I want you to go ahead and get you some pills on the paper and uh, uh, be able to take some good copious notes this morning because the word of God is going to be so blessed today. Listen, here at House of Faith, we've also had this powerful worship, I mean, praise and worship service and ministry encouragement. And if you miss corporate prayer, oh my goodness, I tell you, uh, Sister Linda, uh, Linda was praying, praise the Lord, and the rock was like shaking the floor. <laughs> Ooh, I said, my, 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 truly blessed. And it's truly, we are blessed to be here one more time. Amen. So, uh, listen, without further delay, we'll get right into this word. And again, so you, you, you want to go ahead and get your Bibles out, whether you have it in printed text, whether you have it electronic, or you have it on your iPhone, your iPod, your iPad. Some of you may have it on your iPod. Praise the Lord, it doesn't matter. But it's going to be so impactful today. And uh, you want to get you the word of God. So again, watch this by Facebook Live. Go ahead and like it and share. And if you watch this by delayed broadcast, uh, truly we thank you again for you tuning in for it. In the name of Jesus. Let's get right into this word. Praise the Lord. I hope you guys are ready for this word. Oh my goodness. I Woo! My, 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 my. Glory to God. If I could do it, I could get out of my body, go get myself high five, and come back to my body. <laughs> it's so good. So let's go ahead and get in the word and praise the Lord. Let's hold up my Bible the pipe. And let's make this confession of faith that you would say these familiar words. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the dynamic, the powerful, the every Christian, the life changer, word of God. My mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I boldly confess, I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess, I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess, I will hear God's word today. I'll never, never, never be the same. For thou is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thou is the power, and mine is the power. For thou is the glory, and mine is the glory. 
forever and ever and ever. For this is my receiving day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go ahead with our end dogs uh, this morning. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our family members here at House of Faith Christian Center, as well as those who watch this broadcast, either Facebook Live or social media outlet that we have. So uh, this year, we began, I'll be powerful last week. Uh, God gave us prophetic words this year, and the words that we'll be sharing all year the thesis is God's grace of favor to me in 2023. And the scripture God has given us is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57 from the Amplified Version will be references to scripture all year old that you have. Uh, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 uh, in the Amplified Version says, this is, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory, yes. making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So notice that thanks be to God, not be thanks to the government, not be thanks to the education, not be thanks to the economy, not be thanks to Congress, not be thanks to any man, any entity, any institution, but our thanks is unto God who, yes. because it is God who gives us the victory. Yes. And I like to hear in Amplified, it says, he is the only gives a victory, but then it amplifies what they mean. It says, making us conquerors yes. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And so today we will be uh, teaching on the subject of, in the name of Jesus, we have a victory. Yes. <laughs> yes. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Praise the Lord. Say this. In the name, in the name of, Jesus, of Jesus, we have, we have the, victory. the victory. Now say it again. In the name, in the name of, Jesus, of Jesus, we have, we have the, victory. the victory. Now I want you to make it personal. Say, in the name, in the name of, Jesus, of Jesus, I have. I the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm going to get it. I have it right now. Amen. Now, our introduction, and I always talk, I thought as I was preparing this message, is that um, I, I remember growing up that there was a uh, a, a, a show that Ed aired uh, from 1960s and 1980s, and it was a, a popular sports program, uh, and it came on national television. And uh, the sports program was called ABC Wide World of Sports. And, and this show was interesting because it, it covers sports from all over the globe. And almost every sport that you can participate, I'm talking about from basketball, uh, track and field, boxing, uh, uh, badminton, tennis, golf, any kind of sport you can think of it, this show carried it and it, it aired as, uh, as well. And uh, one of the facets of the show that really captures people's attention it, it is how the show, the program began. Because it began with some famous words and some images. And this is how the show began. It, 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 it started, it says, the thrill of victory. And there it would probably show maybe a boxer knocking somebody out or it's showing a track, a field guy winning the, the race or it's showing a swimmer coming across the line, you know, uh, uh, showing uh, uh, some type of way where a person experienced the victory. Maybe it was a car, uh, the Indianapolis 500 or something, you know, and uh, they were in the victory lane. So it says the thrill of victory. If I say the thrill of victory. The thrill. But then after that, it says pause, and after it says the thrill of victory, it was says the agony of defeat. And then it will show a caption of maybe uh, a guy, the this guy was coming down the, the ski slope, <laughs> ski slope, you know, and extended scoop slope, you know, he got off track and he just fell and tumbled all over whatever it is, you know, or some person receiving the demise or something like that. And it shows something about a person being defeated. But again, the caption was the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And as I think about this, I, 
I, I think about this cover that my friends, that there is nothing more exciting and thrilling than to experience victory in our lives. I'm talking about victory in our spirits, victory in our souls, victory in our emotions, victory in our bodies, victories on our jobs, victory in our businesses, victory with family members and friends, and, and victory in finances, and victory uh, in, in success. Nothing can surpass that excitement to know that an individual in some type of way has experienced the thrill of victory. Mm. You see, for victory is essential to our health and to our happiness. But on the other hand, defeat can destroy and hinder and paralyze our faith. For it is God's will, and I want you to understand this, it is God's will as our Heavenly Father. It is God's will as we who are children of the King. It is His will for us to walk in, in victory and not in defeat. <coughs> yes, this is real, my friends. See, it, it, God doesn't want us to be defeated in any area of our lives. He wants us to experience Victory after victory after victory. Glory to God. And although my friends that Satan will come and he will try to fire his fiery dots at us, and although he'll try to do things to try to discourage us and things to try to defeat us, but we have to say that in the midst of that, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. <laughs> Say, in the, in the name of Jesus. I have the victory. I have the victory. Now, when you look at somebody in a beautiful brown, green, hazel, blue eyes, hoping not bloodshot eyes, and say, friend, friend, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus you, have you have the victory. The victory. <laughs> you got to say that. Because, praise the Lord, our theme again this year is God's grace of favor to me in 2023. And if I'm going to experience God's grace, if I'm going to experience God's favor, I've got to understand I have the victory yes. in 2023. Amen. Amen. So today, my friend, I want to, to, to speak on the subject of how to live on B on B I C T O R Y. Victory is my battle cry in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. How to live in that. And today is part one, and later on we'll get on to other parts of a message. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, but this is going to be more of an introduction that to get you to start saying as we enter this new year, 2023. Listen, regardless of what happened in 2022, regardless of the experiences, regardless of things you had in your emotions, regardless of things you had in your finances, and God's things you had in your marriage, and God's things you had in your relationship, it's all over the all. But in this year, 2023, you're going to say, I've got the victory for me in 2023. Amen. So today I talk about I talk about how to live in victory in Jesus Christ part one. So here's it number one. Today I'm just gonna focus on number one. To live in victory in Jesus Christ. Listen, the first thing we must do is we must think victorious thoughts and not defeated thoughts. So your victory, my friends, is going to start in how you think. If you start thinking victory thoughts, most of the time, you're going to have victory thoughts. I'm talking about every area of your life. I don't care what it is. But you start thinking about defeat thoughts and talk about what you can't do and talk about what you can't have and talk about what you can't accomplish. Your defeat thoughts, then therefore it's been very difficult for you to experience victory. So it's going to start in how you think. Amen. Glory to God. So today I just want to look at uh, uh, some things about victory, but let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to verse 5. 
in all these scriptures, except the last one, we come to the New King James Version, and, and we're going to get them all in. Again, you're watching this by Facebook. You, you want to be in here, like it, and share it, and contact your family members, and listen. Listen, I don't care who they are. I don't care the mama them, daddy them, they brother them, they the sister them, Pookie them, Chiquita them, them, listen, little Freddie, it don't matter the Saturday. Contact them, let them know House of Faith Christian Center is on the air, and that this preacher in Smyrna, Tennessee, gonna teach me how to live in victory in Christ Jesus in the area of my life. Hallelujah. So, so again, it starts off there. Here it says, says, for whatever is born of God, Overcomes the world. Now we talk about the world. Talk about a world system, a worldly system that's anti against God. And this is a victory. And I mean, what is it? this is a victory that overcomes the world. Now, how do we overcome our faith? Our faith. And verse five says, "Who is he who overcomes the world? But he believes that Jesus is the Son." of God. Now, so it says, whatever, whosoever is born of God. How many people are born of God in here? Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice, we overcome the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. How? Our faith. And your faith starts in how you think. If you think faith, you're going to experience faith, and your faith will lead you to have victory in every area of your life. But we know faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So there is no word, you can't get faith. You can't get faith, how you'll get victory. Hallelujah. Now you see why there are people who complain all the time? The people that think don't ever work for them all the time? You think people all the time and say nothing happens good to me? People are always after me and uh, people don't like me and I can't never get ahead, I can't never get a job, I can't never get a career, I can't never get a man, can't never get a woman, can't get nothing whatsoever, can't get no money. Why? Because they have no faith, because they have no word, and you have no word, no word, no faith, no victory. Get the word, you'll get the faith, and your faith will lead you to victory. Yes, yeah. hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says you won't survive, but it says you'll overcome. Glory, glory. We are not survivors. Yeah. We are overcomers. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Now, this word overcome is very interesting because this word overcome means to have a superior attitude. All right. Write that down. When you overcome, when you have victory, it is a superior attitude that you have. I, 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 I saw this here and I, I gotta write this down. Well, I got it in my Bible and, 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 and I saw this, I said, this is good, praise the Lord. Uh, is in a commentary, First John chapter five and verse four, and uh, oh my God, to overcome our believers, they overcome comes from the word meaning to conquer, to have victory, to have. Superiority, now watch this, or to experience conquering power. Glory right. to God. That's when you overcome every situation that comes in your life. And, and so it says, our faith. So who is he who overcomes the world? But he believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, here's the, the, the understand what he says the word believe, because people say, Oh, I believe in Jesus. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I, I do believe in the Son of God. But, but here's the thing about it is, what is your faith in what you believe? Yeah. All right now. See, it's not just a mental concept. It's not just, oh, I believe, I believe in No, no, no. The, where's the proof of the pudding? Hallelujah. Okay? How do you relate to Jesus as the Son of God? That's the question. See, is there a relationship that leads to a fellowship? Glory. Because when you believe, the relationship is there, but it continues to increase a fellowship with Jesus, and you just love hanging out with Jesus. Yeah. 
<laughs> you find out that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Glory. And Glory. that will allow you to experience victory after victory, to overcome, to have the superiority over things that happen to your life, and to have conquering power. Say this, I have, I have conquering power, power in, my life. in my life. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all, we just, listen, we just saw the first group. We ain't got to tell us stuff yet. See, if you can get this right here. Yes. And whatever yes. the child is going, you have overcome the power that overcomes your life. You, you, you experience that. You, you overcome the situation. Yes. Glory to God. We're done this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, I got all ready, ready to get here early this morning for worship service. You know, and I told God, I said, I'll see you later. And glory to God. And went outside and looked. Oh my God, my towel's flat. Oh no. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, and 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 and, the, and, 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 and you know, there was an old look at you now. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Oh my God. But if you got, we got two cars. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I remember the time I had to ride the bus. Amen. But because of victory. I said, a flat tire can't stop me. Hallelujah. I said, sweet, are you ready? I'm ready to go. Praise the Lord. I said, whoa, you keep me me in the car. <laughs> I went on kicking the car and kicking the tire and complaining. No, I said, I got victory. Yes, yes. I have overcoming power, yeah. and I'll conquer everything that comes in my life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So today what I want to do is I just want to go through this acronym just very quickly and get some things here because I want you to focus on victory after victory after victory and everything. And listen, defeat's never been an option. I mean, listen, you, you don't even talk about defeat. You don't talk about doubt. You don't talk about what it don't happen. So that won't even be in your mouth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's just look at this. I want to give you seven keys to B-I-C-T-O-R-Y that you have on today. And then we'll look at some more things when we come back again in, 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 in a few weeks, you know. But I want you to get you started because, you know, this is a new year. This is a new you that you have. And I want to hear what you experience victory in every area of your life. So let's look at this acronym victory. All right? Praise the Lord. Let's look at B. What does B stand for? B stands for diligent. In other words, if you're going to have victory, you must be diligent. Everybody say diligent. Yeah, Look at First Peter chapter five verse eight, and all these are from the New King James version. We're just going to go through these, and you can make notes and things, or share some things with you that you have. This is Peter writing to the church to believers, you know, and because they were coming against persecution, it was coming against tribulation, it was coming against trials, uh, they was coming against discouragement, uh, from depression, and all these things was trying to come into the early believers that would have because they were being persecuted. So Peter, praise the Lord, who was a disciple of Jesus. Glory to God, and one of the leaders of the church, one of the pillars of the church, after he dipped his pen into the ink of inspiration, he wrote this letter to the church. He said this. He said, Now be sober. All right? He said, Be diligent. Everybody say diligent. Be diligent. Because what? Well, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, how do I combat against this enemy, this adversary, who wants to take me out? Who's walking uh, like 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 a lion, and he's fought, you know, to seeking whom he can devour. Now he can't devour anybody. <laughs> All right, that's why he gotta seek somebody. And the people who he is seeking to devour are those who refuse to be sober and to be diligent. Now, 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 this word diligent it means to be aware. It means to be watchful. At all times. Why? Because the devil wants to get those who are vulnerable. Yeah. He's like a roaring lion. All right? Now, and another animal that, that likes to devour is, is, is uh, the, the, the tiger, the African tiger. And just like the lion, he wants to devour his prey that we do. You know, and uh, one of the things that he, 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 he does is that he'll see, you know, maybe uh, some sheep in a pasture or something. And, you know, and this animal, this, this tiger, this is just like a lion wants to devour, 
what he would do is he would look at that particular prey. Maybe it's a lamb, maybe it's a gazelle or something, a sheep or something like that. And he would look at that one particular lamb or sheep or gazelle or whatever his prey is. And he would focus on that. That's all he would do. And because of that, someone came up and says that this tiger has an eye. So we call it the eye of the tiger. Yeah. Why? Because he's focused on that one one. Well, the sheep and the lamb knows that. All right? And, and so they say, what can we do to discourage that? So what they would do is, you have this one thing, you know, and this little lamb or little sheep would come like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and then you will go chasing after this one. And then another comes in, nah, 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 nah. And then you go chase after this one. And then another says, nah, 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 nah. And you go chase after this one. And, and before you know it, he would get so tired out, he wouldn't get any of them. But a good tiger, a good lamb, is seeking a walking whom he can bow. He will put his focus on this one one who's vulnerable. All right? Who won't be with the other lambs, the other sheep, because he understands that if you're together, it's hard for the lion to get you. But if he can get you separated yeah. from the flock and separated from the fold and keep you divided. Then you become easy prey for the lion yes. to devour you. Right. So here's some things you want to do. I right, look here. Number one, you become vigilant by, by watchful alert power, by praying. Mm -hmm. By having an attitude of prayer. Yes. Pastor Terry talked about the corporate prayer that we had on yesterday. I mean, it was woo, awesome. Prayer, people. I mean, the, the prayer, the testimony, you know, all that is so awesome for prayer. Now, we just noticed it, you know, and I'm sure many of you uh, 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 have heard, you know, concerned about the, the uh, pro athlete football player that was injured to die uh, on Monday Night Football that, that he had. And, and, and he died. So as he died twice. Yeah. Died twice on the football, then he died. And people came together in the team. They stopped the game. And, and they, they just began to start praying. And they start praying and start praying. They put an ambulance. And the call went out. And people from all over the nation, people all over the world, began to pray for DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. Yes. Because the enemy wanted to take him out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He hadn't reached his prime yet. About 23 years old. Young man. They didn't want to bow him, take him out. Yeah. But he became against his dog. And I have, I, I praise the Lord, he had a praying mom and a praying grandma and said, you're not going to take our baby out. Praise the Lord. And prayer warriors and prayer groups started coming together all over the city and all over the state. They forgot about football. They forgot about all that. And said, we need to pray. Yes. Yeah. And they begin to pray. And they begin to pray. And they begin to fast. And yeah. it's amazing. It happened with, on our fast when we were fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Amen. And this group was praying for God. You know, it was like I say, what about football anymore? It's about thinking about God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. This young man who had died, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. He woke up and he gave a pen and he couldn't talk. And the first thing he said, wrote on the paper was, who won the game? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now it's interesting because most things like that, you would have brain damage. And only he remembered the last thing was he was playing football. Yeah. Calling God. And then the other day, they just said they took the tubes out of his mouth. He's breathing on his own. He's talking. He's giving praise unto God. Praise the Lord. And then the last night when I watched, just they watched football, glory to God. You before pregame and everything, they come together. But I saw glory to God. I saw a team over here, a team over there. Yeah. Sitting at 50 yards out. On their knees, praying. Yeah. Don't tell me we talk about we serve a great God. Yes. Yes. When we come together, we pray. The enemy can't touch us. Right. <laughs> we let a little pig stuff be back on. Yeah. We come together and pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus says, Ask, and yeah. it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Yes. Yes. You do that, the devil, the uh -huh. royal lion can't touch you. Oh, unless you pray, you must get in the word of God. 
that the word of God saturates you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. When I was coming here and Sister Linda just praying, she was just praying that word. Just praying that word over yeah. and over again with the Holy Spirit. The other thing, third thing is, again, you've got to stop hanging around other Christians. Being around fellowship with other Christians yeah. to do that. I ain't going to hell church because they ain't right. Well, come and help make us right. That's right. Since you got it all together. That's right. Make us right. Show them how to be right. right. So we know we got everything wrong. That's right. Show them how to be right then. <laughs> but it's something about when Christians get together and we fellowship together and we talk together and we, we worship together and we fellowship together and we eat out together and we do all those things together. It creates a strong bond yeah. that can indicate the virus. So ability, that's what we must do. Hallelujah. Number the next one I if I'm going to experience victory, I got to have an image. We have to realize that we are made in the image and likeness of God. In the Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 27. Made in the image and likeness of God. It says that God said, Notice, let us make man in our image. If I say image. image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Now notice, this image, this likeness, that we are made in the image and likeness of God. We have the capacity, we have the God nature inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And notice why this image is, this image, when we say image, then we can have dominion over some things. Mm -hmm. We can, the word dominion comes from the word we get the word dominate. Mm -hmm. See, we're not just a vibe, we're supposed to dominate some things. Right. Yes. But I can't dominate and have victory if I don't have an image and I'm made in the likeness of God. Right. And so there's some stuff that you say, I'm just a spirit, I just ain't gonna put no will. I'm gonna have dominion over that. You are defeated in the name of Jesus because I have dominion over you. Sickness, I have dominion over you. Lack and poverty, I have dominion over you. Depression, discouragement, I have dominion over you. Hallelujah. Because I'm made in the image and likeness of God. And when God wanted something to happen, the Bible says he said something. And when you speak to that thing, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. In the name of Jesus, you'll start seeing victory out of victory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says dominion over. Everybody say over. Over. Did you know you're called to dominate? Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will no longer be the victim. You can be the victor. Yes. Everybody has the victory. So you got to listen, you got to have an image seeing yourself dominating anything that's trying to control you. I don't care what it is. You got to see yourself walking in victory. You got to see that thing under your feet. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Praise the Lord. People say, yeah, uh, uh, that's why you smile all the time. Have you ever seen a person walking in victory sad? No. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, boy. I'm just. Uh, I got the victory, hallelujah. I got the victory, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, husband ain't acting right, oh, wife won't act right, oh, children ain't acting right, oh, I got the victory. But you tell your husband, you tell your wife, we got victory in the name of Jesus. You tell your children, we got victory in the name of Jesus. This house is a victorious house. Yes. This yes. car driving is a victorious truck. Yes. This job I have is a victorious truck. Yeah. Good. And you start speaking about because you have an image and you're called to dominate. Say, I'm called, I'm called to dominate. To dominate. Amen. <laughs> but you gotta see an image and you dominate. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's go to see. 
Seize that call. There are times you need to call out to God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. We call out to God. People have me through, they know who to call out to. This is what God says. God says, listen, call to me and I will answer you. Watch this. And show you great and mighty things which you did not know. Oh, glory to God. Don't you know God has the answer for every question? He has a solution to every problem. Things you try to figure it out. God says, call to me. I've already worked it out. Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord. God, I'm in a situation right now. I'm in a crossroad. I just don't know where to go. I just don't know what to do. So my God says, call out to me. Yes. If you want victory, call out to me. Yes. Yeah. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, call out to me. Things are not working. Call out to me. Yes. And God says, listen, I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to show you great in my day. Now, when God shows you, don't get mad at God. <laughs> God, I want big to make praise. Look, God said, you need to stop doing that. Uh-oh. -uh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, is that option number two? <laughs> he said, I'll show you things you didn't know. Right. See, if you know it, you need to call out God. That's why Christians should never walk in confusion. Mm -hmm. Never. Just call out to God. Mm -hmm. And let God, God, I'm going to stay there until you give me an answer. Yeah. It didn't say call out to mom and them and daddy and them, baby brother and them, baby yeah. sister them, folk and them. It didn't say call out to pastor. Mm -hmm. When people say, I call you pastor, I said, did you call out to God first? Right. Yeah. No, I said, you go back and call out to God. See what God right. says. Yeah. Then God says, you know, contact pastor. Then you call it God. God said, go see your pastor. A lot of times you call God, God said, you need time, you know what you need to do. All right. You need to stop being mad all the time. Ooh, we're gonna get some water. Ooh. You need to stop being mean all the time. Just when things didn't go my way, okay. Things don't go my way, I don't get mad at folk. Man, they don't do what I want them to do. That's your problem. Yeah. They trying to do you trying to do what you want to do, yeah. glory to God. You do what God wants you to do, and mind your business. All right, now. Ooh, you're going to preach in the middle now. Call out to God! <laughs> they just don't act right. And you all upset? <laughs> listen, they go, listen they, they, they didn't act right before you got there. Yeah. They didn't act right when you there. Yeah. And they didn't act right after you gone and yeah. dead. They still didn't act right. Right. <laughs> They just put you in early grade. <laughs> yeah. And they just keep doing their business. <laughs> I just said, no, go, go ahead. Go. Uh, Lord God. See, God show. See, God has, He has helped me so many times because I've been trying to get people to do God said, leave them alone. That's he right. said, if they don't listen to you, to me, they don't listen to you. That's right. okay. And you mad. He said, I ain't mad. <laughs> so if God ain't mad, I ain't mad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I'm going to show you great mighty things, things you didn't know. He'll give you wisdom about some things. Yes. Hallelujah. Show you about some things about people. That everybody else said it was one way, and God showed you, say, oh, they ain't the they really are. Their true colors are coming out now. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I that long. All right. He says, when we call out to God, we are acknowledging the fact that He alone can solve our problems and meet our needs. He alone can. God, you can do this thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all going to COVID, God showed me what to do, what I need to do. He did. He showed me what I need to do, continue to do. And I, you know, I, I'm getting prayed not, not unto to Ronnie Simmons, but on uh, God. I didn't catch COVID. I mean, it, it tried to sometime come one time, and I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. You know, because I go back to that, that I don't feel right to me, right? You know, and you know, and I, I just feel tired, what it is, and all that. And uh, you know, I just went to bed, put on some praise and worship so songs, and glory to God, got to praise God, praise God, what it is, next day, glory to God. The day before, I wouldn't eat anything. God showed what I need to do. God said, I need you to spend some time with me. You, you, you're running too much. You need to sit down and spend some time with me and focus on yeah. me. And I started doing that. Amen. And all the symptoms went away. 
And I have played game bag and I clean up refrigerator for you as well. Now God, I need some way, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it just showed you some things. Okay, that you do that. So you call out to him, God, you can meet my needs. Yeah. All right, number uh, T. T stands for thoughts. We have to take our thoughts into captivity. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to verse 5. Because thoughts will come at you. The way the enemy attacks you, man, is I can say it's your thoughts, your thoughts. How do you talk about things? And many times when you think about something, you're going to say what you think. And we, we got to learn how not to say everything we think. Yeah, Unless it's based on the word of God. But I was thinking, I got to say it. Who told you that? I mean, who died with you and John? Excuse me, I'm sorry. All right, let me go all right. That's East Africa, by the way, all right? All right. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and verse 5. It says, For the weapons of our warfare, watch this, are not carnal, but mighty God who put it on strong. Now, the weapons of warfare is prayer, the word of God, uh, uh, our testimonies, our profession, hanging around the saints of God, praise and worship, you know, uh, listen to the voice of God. See, those are weapons, you know, but they're mighty, you know, in God, and they will pull down strong, strong folks. Now, watch this, verse 5. Casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God of uh, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Y'all stop trying to reason with people who don't know God. Yeah. I don't reason with people like that, but I don't believe you. God's okay, fine, I'll leave alone. I'm gonna make you understand. I ain't gonna make you do anything. I ain't gonna waste my time. I pray for you, I love you, I ain't gonna make you. Why? Because that's a thought that's been put in their heart that they, they don't need God except they get in trouble. And you can't beat it out of them. That's true. There's a reason, there's a philosophy, there's false religions that go around that listen, they're in charge of everything and they don't need God. That is a thought. Mm -hmm. And that thought listen, must be come against the knowledge of God. Why? Because that thought is putting them in captivity. Yeah. They're a slave to that thinking. Oh, everybody can't be like you. Where did it come from, my thought? <laughs> well, man, nobody's perfect like you. That's a thought. <laughs> There's no scripture to do that with it. It's a reason that comes from this world. And so that thought has been brought down, what? Captivity into the meanings of Christ. Because it's anti-God and anti-the world. So a thought that comes out of God, that takes me away from God, I got to cast it down. It says, we take our thoughts into it. It says, every thought which comes from the enemy must be defeated. And this comes through our obedience to Jesus Christ. When we obey Jesus, those thoughts got to go away. Well, I can't forgive them. You can't. Jesus forgave you. Yeah. And he says, forgive my God for giving you. That's what he says. I mean, I, I, I mean, people say they're Christians, but I'll never forgive you. I said, where did that come from? So it's a thought that's been embedded upon them. Child, don't trust nobody. You know, I hear women say it all the time. There ain't no good men around anymore. Not for you, if you think like that. I, I wouldn't be around either if I was single. <laughs> <laughs> they may be good, they find you, you wouldn't be good no more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's all? It says, the Lord, bring me a husband. The Lord, bring me a wife. Amen. The Lord, be, be there for a person that we can share your glory together. And God had that person. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, Lord. Well, Pastor Boo, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, O O says for overcome to overcome the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 and verse 11 just kind of, kind of go over these things it says then I heard a loud voice in heaven it says now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of this Christ has come for the accuser of our brother he accused them before day and night has been cast down. Verse 11, watch this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony 
and they did not love their lives to death. Everybody say overcome. overcome. Now let's go back to the lift. I want to show you something. It says, uh, for the accuser of our brethren. Now this is a reference to Satan. Okay, understand what's going on. Satan wants to come before God and accuse you of stuff. God, they're not worthy. God, look how they messed up. God, listen, they're not thankful. They're not grateful for anything. And God, you, you're going to continue to bless them? So he accuses you. But watch this. But he doesn't stop there. Not only does he accuse you before God, but he accuses God before you. The enemy will come and tell you God doesn't love you anymore. Yeah. He would accuse you and tell you that God has forsaken you. That God has abandoned you. That if God was so good, why do you have to go through this situation? If God was so good, why this person had to leave you? If God was so good, why you lost your job? If God was so good, why your marriage ended up in divorce? If God was so good, why this happened? And so he would accuse you of stuff about God, which is not true. That's why the Bible calls him a liar. Yes. And the father of all lies. Yes. You tell these lies on his teeth, move. But he wants to accuse God of stuff God does not do. But not only does he accuse you before God, and not only does he accuse God before you, but he will accuse other people before you as well. Yes. And he'll try to put you against other people. Yeah. And he'll whisper stuff in the ear. Mm -hmm. You know the reason why they didn't speak to you today is because they <laughs> had it. <laughs> and you start thinking, oh, they did, what did I do? And the reason I didn't speak is because they really didn't see you. Mm -hmm. But now the enemy comes with all stars. You know what? You better not do that. They're going to talk about you. Huh. And he'll put this person against this person and stuff is not even true. Yeah. Because that's his job. You're cute. I mean, listen. And I'll say this a lot. I mean, you got people who are mad and past. I have no idea because I just preach the truth. Yeah. I mean, I'm generally getting along with everybody. Pastors mm -hmm. don't love me no more. Because I preach the truth. <laughs> because I stand up on the word of God. Because I see your future. And I see the trap that you're going to. Yeah. And I'm saying, stay away from that trap. It's going to hurt you. Yeah. And people get mad at pastors. He ain't no good pastor. It, you know, it's, it's not like the lady who uh, accused her pastor of, of not caring for her. So she's in the hospital, you know, and she called a friend and said, come up here. He said, well, huh? He said, I'm mad at pastor. He said, why? Because pastor didn't come see me when I was in the hospital. And he ain't been up here yet. And she was just upset. And the lady, but he can't see me. He said, what happened? She said, well, I, you know, she said, when I was in the hospital, so I called pastor, you know, and I talked to him and pastor, I would come see you. And so they said, well, did you call pastor tell me he's in the hospital? She said, no. <laughs> she said, well, hold it. You didn't call pastor to come tell you he's in the hospital, but you're mad as pastor. Why is that? She said, Well, the Lord tell them everything else, and might well tell them I'm in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> now, she was mad at Pastor because the Lord didn't tell Pastor that she was in the hospital. <laughs> Accuser of the brethren. Yeah. But watch this, I like this part. But guess what? They all came him. They all came his discouragement. They all came his lies. They all came his accusation. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of that testimony. And they didn't love the Lord. It was the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You've got to know what the blood yes. represents. Yes. yes. It represents your healing. Yes. It represents your deliverance. It represents your redemption. It represents your reconciliation. Lord. It represents all of that. That's the blood. We're coming under blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. 
So I don't come in, I, when things come, I plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And my testimony is what the blood has done for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. Yeah. I know it was the blood. <laughs> I know it was the blood for me. Yes. One day when I was lost, he what? Died on the cross. Yeah. I know it was the blood for me. Yeah. Yeah. See, your testimony about when the blood is working for you, it overcome everything that the enemy does. Yeah. Amen. But if you let your emotions come, oh my goodness, they'll come and rule over you and talk to you and tell you all kind of stuff and put all kind of stuff in your head. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Christians. Why? Because the job of the enemy is to accuse people against people against one another. You see what happened when people came together and prayed? You see what happened to this nation? Listen, they didn't care whether you was Baptist or Methodist or Church of Christ or, or a Pentecostal or a, 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 a Jew. They, they, what football team you was with? What all that? They came together in one in prayer and you see what they said. Yeah. They said all this stuff is immaterial. Let's pray to God. Because we understand the enemy is trying to take our brother out. Yeah. And we're not going to let him have him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And so that's what he does. He overcomes. So our testimony is based upon faith in what the sacrifice of Jesus has provided for us. There are represent repentance. Look in uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through verse 20. Now, understand that repentance to God initiates the spiritual cleansing process in our lives. Now I want to show you something here. This is this is a good word. I mean this is an awesome word. I'm yeah. talking about how you get victory in every area of your life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Well you have to walk in the victory. I'm gonna be happy. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I mean me and Pastor Terry and little Levi, we're gonna be happy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, y'all hear Pastor complain about anything? Complain about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, Because I got victory. First day of victory, don't complain. I walk in victory. I still deal with stuff. I'm sorry, y'all. We still deal with things, but we got victory over that. Amen. <laughs> it says repent. Everybody say repent. Repent. Now, this word repent, it means to change your mind, change your attitude, change your will, mm -hmm. and change your direction. Yes. Let's say it again. Repent means, it don't mean I'm just sorry. Right. I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my attitude, I'm changing my will, and I'm changing my direction. Yes. Amen. He says, therefore, and you'll be converted. Right. Or you'll be changed. Watch this. That your sins may be blotted out. Why? So the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Glory. And that he may send Jesus, the Christ, who was preached to you before them. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about it is, people love refreshments. You know, you, you 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 go and you like refreshment, so you go to the movie and you like to be refreshed. All right? Have you ever talked to somebody sometimes that says that, uh, you know what, I'm just in a dry season of my life. I'm just dry, things are dry, things are not growing, things are still, I'm in a dry. What do they need? They need refreshing. Amen. You need to refresh yourself, right? But watch this. Refreshing don't come until that repentance starts. Amen. Ooh, Lord, Amen. God. You will not experience the refreshing of the Lord until there's a repentance. Right. Amen. I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's wrong with you folk and you folk. And everybody got a problem except me. You know, I got this thing together. I know everything about the Lord. Mm. You do. Yeah. You do. What do they want? What do they want? God says, before I can see you refreshing, you got to do some repentance. Yeah. And repentance says, God, I messed up. Yes. God, I didn't get it right. And I go to God all the time, God, I didn't get it right. God, change me. See, I come to God, call to God. Jesus said, come unto me all you that believe. Come to me first. Yes. And God, deal with Ronnie first. Instead of dealing with everybody else, everybody's problem, everybody else, God, deal with Ronnie first. And then once I repent, God said, no, you ready for the refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every time we go to a movie, we gotta get refreshments. Don't be a two-hour movie, these refreshments. 
So God says, I want to refresh you. I want to restore you. I want to bring some things back down to them where they were, but you got to repent first. So refreshment, watch this. Refreshment is God's job. My responsibility is to repent. And God, this, this is one of the times God can't do his job until you do yours first. Yeah. So if I don't see things not working in my life, I don't get mad with God. Guess what? I don't even get mad with you. Because it's easy to play the blame game. I look at the man in the mirror and say, God work on Ronnie Simmons. Amen. And I repent for it. I repent for people. I said, man, if I said something to you, what it is? Now listen, word, no word. I ain't apologize for the word. I ain't apologize for nobody for the word. Amen. But if I said something to I said, I repent. Forgive me. Hallelujah. Why? What's the state? My refreshment. And I ain't gonna let nobody stop me from getting my refreshment. <laughs> so it means repent you, ask God, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I ain't doing anything with you. Well, in case you did, all about doing something, I can give you anyway before you do it. <laughs> Why? Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. And it says, and they may send Jesus Christ who was preached to them. So that's it. And then then, then uh, why? The last one is yield. Yield. Yield our bodies unto the righteous and holy. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 19. All right? Romans chapter 6, verse 19. And uh, Sister Sharon, I'm going to put you on the spot something at the very end, at the time. I want you to look at Psalms 89, and verse 1, in the New King James Version. Psalms 89, and verse 1, in the New King James Version. Now, get this. <sighs> Romans 6, 19, he says this. Now he's talking to Christians. He said, I'm speaking in familiar terms because of your natural limitations. Watch this. For as you have yielded both bodily members and faculties of servants to impurity and every increase in lawlessness, he says, so now if I say right now, right. watch this. I yield my bodily members and faculties once for all as servants of righteousness right being and doing, which leads to sanctification. So I tell my body what to do, instead of my body telling me what to do. Yeah. I have to tell my eyes, eyes, you are the righteousness of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ears, you are the righteousness of God. Mouth, oh, glory to God, you definitely the righteousness of God. All play, everything else. So I he said, you're your body. This is what he said. You're your body members you must all serve the right. So you start telling your body, your body belongs to the Lord. Your body is righteous, your body is holy, your body is sanctified, and you don't put anything in your body that will destroy that. So when something tries to come, I gotta tell that body, you don't receive that. Yeah. Amen. And he said over and over again, my body belongs to the Lord. My eyes, my lips, my tongue, my, tongue, my ears, eyes, everything, I yield it to the righteousness of God. Yes. Amen. That's how you get victory. Mm -hmm. But if you don't say anything and tell your body what to do, your body will tell you anything it wants to do. And it'll crave and stuff and so forth and all. And when you stop it, it'll be, I'm not going to let you, I want it, I want it, I want it. No, 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 no. Ah, ah, ah. No, no, no. You, 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 you. All right, I'll put some on you. <laughs> You act crazy as you want to. <laughs> Body, you have your eyes here, and now you won't. How did you do that? Yes, why? Because I'm yielded to righteousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, just, I help people get delivered anything if they want to. I don't care what it is. I can help people get delivered. I've been trying to stop. No, no, no. Just tell that your body, you will yield to righteousness and not to your prayer. And every time that temptation comes, every time that urge comes, every time that situation comes, you start telling your body, you belong to God. Yes, yes. Amen. But you keep saying, well, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I tried this, I tried that, and nothing ain't right. You know, if I can deal with something. And you gonna live in victory? No. I'm closing now. Uh, we talk about VIC to do all that. That's you about it. This is how you live with Jesus. 
a job half finished that the Lord says that's one other thing I want you to experience to have my victory because you'll go through difficult times. Things will come. <coughs> Things you didn't expect to try to catch you off guard. And I gotta show you how to experience victory in those tough times. Guys. When you feel like, you know, hey, throwing in the towel, saying that's it, I can't take no more. Listen to me somebody here. Because some of you think about giving up and quit. That's one of the things you're gonna experience with. Pull up Psalms 89, verse 1 in the King James Version. Y'all write this down. This blessed me so much. Psalms 89 and verse 1. I'm sorry. Is that? Uh -huh. in, in, the, in the Psalms, are Psalms, not, Psalms, I'm sorry, Psalms 98, verse 1. Psalms 98, verse 1. In the New King saying, my, my book. Psalms 98, verse 1. Because something happened to me, uh, oh, back in 95, and I don't share this with a lot of people, but uh, House of Faith, we had just kind of got started. Um, we were growing and things were doing good. And something came in our ministry and it just, I mean, wow. I don't, I don't know what it was. You know, I'm still, you know, young in the, in the faith, the Christian faith, as far as being a pastor in the word of faith. And uh, it came and it just devastated our ministry. And uh, at the time we were living in Murfreesboro, uh, and again, House of Faith was about two or three years old that we have. And uh, they're just, it just devastated. Um, People, I mean, you know, they just thought of leaving the ministry. Um, you know, the reason not anything, they don't you know, some of you know why they just, just well. Um, at that time, I was not uh, working a full time job. Um, as a terrorist, full time in school. And, uh, you know, uh, things were really tough that they had. And I had just uh, started a you know, a job for an agency. And we went on real hard financial times. In fact, we were basically homeless. Basically living out of our car. Me, Pastor Terry, and two children that we had, Josh and Jessica. And, um, you know, it was rough, very, very tough time. And, it, you know, the enemy was like, hey, look at if you go about your past, if you got nobody to your past, that's your family. You don't, don't even have a place where you can stay. And so you know, we contact family members and ask if we stay with them um, for you know, a short period of time until we got ourselves on the feet that we did, you know. And uh, it, was, it was tough. And so the Lord allowed us to come to Smyrna. Now we didn't know anybody in Smyrna. In other words, I have some things about Smyrna I can't share right now. But, but my memory of Smyrna was not too good at all. Okay? At all. And things are tough. I was getting discouraged. Just being honest, disappointed. Lord, you said, House of Faith, Christian Center, we're finished. And I don't have a place to put my family. We're homeless. Got things in storage. Live, don't have one car. And all you know, and uh, just start a job with my people. This scripture says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Somebody said, New song. New song. For he has done marvelous things, his right hand and his holy arm has gained him the victory. Yeah. And there's a little song that came in my spirit when I was going through those tough times. And it says, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say that you have to be. That's 
not singing that song. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm talking about homeless. You have the victory. I'm talking about clothes in your car. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say that you have to breathe. Just start the child off. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, why do you have the victory? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say that you have to be. Oh, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, I have the victory. I get a phone call. Mr. Simmons, we got this place for you. You ready to move into your family. Oh, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, you have the victory. Congratulations to the Summers, you, Mrs. Summers, you congratulate you congratulated from Middle Tennessee State University. You now have the degree. Who can stand before us when we call on that great name? We need a church in Smyrna, Tennessee. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. You don't look like a preacher, but I'm willing to listen to what you have to say. Who can stand before us? Three years later, coming out of three bedroom apartment and two of them, over 2,000 square foot. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Both husband and wife, four time job. We have the victory. Son go through high school. Top 10% in the high school. In the name of Jesus. Died a former on the road. In the name of Jesus. You have the victory. Scholarships. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Preacher, there's a building over there. Glory to God. We need somebody to preach it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have the victory. The Lord gave me this song. In the midst of my struggles, in the midst of my tough times, in the midst of seeing my defeated day, I didn't keep my mouth shut. Glory to God. God gave me a new song. He gave a new vision. Praise yeah. the Lord. He gave a new idea. Glory to God. Oh. And I'm glad that I'm still singing that song in the name yeah. of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And if that song can work for me, that song can work for yeah. you. When you're going through your dark times, when you're going through your discouragement, when you're going through your difficulties, when you're going through your depression days, and it seems like you're lost at all, you just have a new song. And yeah. you say, Lord, you've done marvelous things yeah. by your right hand. And now you're holy heart. And God, I thank you. I got the victory. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh yeah, you watch the Lord because you see me now, all your preachers. Oh, you're looking good, you're smelling good, you're driving good, you got a nice home and all that. You've already had these and you don't know what's going on. Amen. You can't have a victory unless you have a battle. All right. <laughs> you can't have a resurrection unless you had a crucifixion. <laughs> you can't have a crown unless you had a cross. Mm. Oh. Glory to God, don't you give up, don't you stop, don't you say it. I don't care what people say about you. It's tough. It's meant to be tough. Uh -huh. To believe everybody will do it. Yeah. A quitter never wins, and a winner never quits. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> my wife said, all times you're running around running sin, you don't quit. Amen. 44 years, he did not quit. Amen. I see people come, I see people go, I still love them, but I ain't quit. Amen. Amen. I have one guy that's going to pass. Pastor, how you, how you been so successful in ministry? You've been preaching for 43 years. I said, you know what? I said, God just told me to drive the bus. That's all he did. I said, some get on. Guess what? And some get off. But the bus keep on moving. Amen. It don't stop for anybody just to pick you up. Yeah. Why? Because you got the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Yeah. I tell you, I'm going to pick this up next time. It's going to be so awesome for you. you this, I'm just getting started, y'all. You're going to have victory after victory after victory. Right. And people are going to think you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take our confessions. God, oh, my goodness. On oh, oh, how to have victory in your life. All right, confession. All right. Uh, number one, say this. I confess, I confess that in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, have I have the victory. victory. Number two, say I confess, I confess that, I that I live in victory in, victory. in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. By, thinking by thinking victorious thoughts, victorious thoughts and not defeated and thoughts. Not and number three, say so I confess, I, I possess. The seven keys, seven keys to victory, to victory. By, being by being diligent, realize that I am made an image of God, calling out to God, God. bringing every thought of the enemy to the obedience of Jesus, overcoming by the blood of Jesus, and by my testimony, and by my testimony repenting unto God, and yielding my body unto righteousness. And hold it. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you're going to walk in victory after victory after victory every day. And we have some challenge today. Yes. <laughs> but you got victory. So let's take our prayer from memory. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I have victory. I thank you that I live in victory in Jesus Christ by thinking victorious thoughts and not defeated thoughts. I thank you that I possess the keys to victory by being diligent, by realizing that I am made in the image of you, by calling out to you, by bringing every thought of the enemy to the obedience of Jesus, by overcoming by the blood of Jesus, and by testimony, by repenting, and by yielding my body unto the righteousness of holiness. I understand that by faith I receive you by victory to me in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I did this prayer, but I, I, I want to tell you, I, I, I made an error in, in this prayer right here because in the middle of the prayer, it says, keep the victory by being, it's supposed to be a vigilant, it says, by being a vigilant. Does anybody know what a vigilant is? What is a vigilant? <laughs> That was a typo. I thought it was, but it says I've been a vigilante. So Jesus said, "Don't you our vigilant? You're a vigilante. I guess it, man. Yeah. You're gonna whip his butt. You're gonna put him in his place, and you're gonna have power and dominion over him every day of your life. You are a vigilante." Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Somebody said that is a butt crazy preacher. <laughs> oh, you may be seeing the praise. Listen, you watch this work, and we have so much fun here at Tops of Faith. I want to tell you, you know it's all about Jesus. He makes it possible. Listen, you never made Jesus love your life. And listen, you, you, you can come and visit the life that you want to. Be built, be sober, built. All right, because your enemy, Satan, is like a war lion. You want to divide, take you out, and you got to be a bit You be a bit that you have. But to do that, you got to know your ABCs. A says you're a bit yourself, and you deserve to die for your sins. B says believe the Lord Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and now this repent. We talked about that earlier. Repent of your sins, 
And then C says, confess Jesus as your Lord. It is simple, my friends. It's ABC to experience victory in your life. It's easy. Don't make it complicated. You can have victory every day. Even when you go through those dark times, those hard times, times when it seems like you're all alone, it seems like times that God's not here with you. You just start saying, in the name of Jesus, I have a victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. According to God's word, I am what I heard. Victory today is mine. So you can receive Jesus today. Just say, Jesus, I receive you in my life today. Save me. So I can experience the victory. Maybe you're here today and you say, what? Well, you know what? Watch the broadcast. Yeah, I got victory, but I don't have a local church. Can I tell you something, my friend? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? This is Revelation. This, unless you are part of a local church, you're not experiencing victory in the area of your life. Well, how do you say that? I said, because you are the little God. Jesus said, the church of what place? He put pastors, he put people in place to minister to you. But if you say, you know what, I don't want that, how can you just leave, just leave it to Jesus and still experience his victory? It won't happen. That's a thought that comes from the pits of hell. So if you're going to be a believer, you need to be a belong. You need to be attending some of the local church and let the Lord lead you. If that's not your local church, the Lord will lead you somewhere. But you need to be hooked up somewhere to a local church where you get the word of God, you fellowship with the saints, you take Holy Communion. All this is a part of your growth. So you can do that. There's anyone here today who said, Pastor, listen, I, I want Jesus, I want to be a part of this church. How can they preach? If you did a day you're not that, just raise your hand and say, Thank you. We receive. So you can be here. Okay. Give me one opportunity. We love you, Lord. And we pray God's blessing upon you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. We do. We do. We do. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I think I enjoyed the word today, huh? Oh, my goodness. I tell you. I tell you, I, tell you, I feel like I can get on my, my body, go to myself, high five, and praise the Lord. Fish bump, just back in it again. Oh, it's so good. The word is so good. So again, praise the Lord. Listen, we're going to move on because, oh God, it is time for our opportunity for prosperity that we have. We're going to go ahead and give our tithes and offerings right now in the name of Jesus. We need an offering on the Lord. Raise your hand. We want to come and serve you uh, to do that. And you watch this broadcast right now. You can uh, be able to participate in this time. All the, listen, you can't pay God. You can't pay God for victory. But you say, God, thank you for the victory. And this is, this, this is your seed. All right? God is your source. All we have is resources. See, these are just resources, seed. So you put your seed in the source and believe the source will meet every need that you have. So this is the three ways you can give. You can do text giving, you can go uh, information, online giving, hospitalbaychristiancenter.org, follow the instructions. Or you can basically give uh, through check, through mail, through money orders, Hospital Christian Center, Post Office Box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167. You can give through that as you will. If you say, I want to give uh, through uh, Pastor Simmons, through uh, Robert Simmons Ministries, uh, that can receive also, that's Cash App. Go to Cash App, hit the dollar sign in RDS Ministries, and then RDS Ministries, and you can give through the Cash App. And give this. Whichever way you give, I want to tell you, number one, it's greatly appreciated. We really thank you so much for helping us build the kingdom of God. And we want to touch people all over, not only this nation, but all over the world with this message about being thankful unto the Lord in the name of, of, of Jesus that we, that we have. Praise the Lord. So again, we want you to go ahead and hold up your offerings that you have right now. And we're going to pray over your offerings. Father, we just want to thank you again for uh, the word that you've spoken to us. To thank you unto God for the victory of Jesus. And Father God, again, we can't pay you, but we can say thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our ministry. Thank you for all things you do for us, Father. We're so grateful. And we love you with our heart. Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father, receive our offering. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We're so grateful. Thank you. And we love you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, glory amen. to God. We go ahead and receive our offerings that we have. And thank you again for you participating in our offering. We need the blood be so much. Nice. God, the blessings of God must be upon you. Remember, the seed that leaves your hand, it never leaves the earth at all. In the name of Jesus, that we do praise the Lord. So whichever way you get inside to give, it's greatly appreciated in Jesus' name. All right. Well, listen, we have just been enjoying thoroughly to be a part of 
worship experience today. Thank you again for taking out of your schedule to be a part of what God's doing here at House of Faith Christian Center. Again, House of Faith Christian Center, we have three four vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, uh, again, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, we are this of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. And listen, I want to leave you these familiar words, not just for the day, but the rest of this year. Remember that Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in our actions. And we'll see you next time. God bless you. Have a great day. In Jesus' name, amen.